Bit of a dull one this week. Previous episodes have been chock full of zany plot points that make no sense or contradict themselves. This episode still has a few, but they're more spread out and less egregious. Overall, this episode is a 5 out of 10. I'm giving it an extra point for not making this look at man ass. And for anyone who says this show is for kids, since when have kids shows used words like semantics? There's a difference between using a linguistic tool and understanding what the word semantics refers to. Like, kids use nouns from their very first words, but the concept of what is and isn't a noun is something saved until school age. I've never really noticed the music in this series, but I did notice some more violin pieces that remind me of the ambient music Inon Zer wrote for Fallout 4. Osha awakens from being pushed off a drop and immediately guzzles whatever is in the nearest bottle she can find. Hey, it passed the sniff test. A wild schnoodler appears. Just a random animal for no reason. Porg's version 2.0. Chuck it in the pot. Good to see he has handrails on the exit to his hidey hole. Osha will be impressed. The world's most overly dramatic zoom out. I thought they were going to zoom out and we'd recognise where we are, like it's Coruscant or Tatooine or something familiar. Nope, it's just some green rock in the middle of an ocean. And the ship is parked on another island, cut off by the tide. Convenient. Osha walks down to the shore, past a family of wild schnoodlers. As she reaches the water's edge, she hears the crunching of rocks, and Kamir has materialised out of nowhere. Was he hiding behind a rock? Wait a minute, so Kamir located Osha, carried her all the way back to his ship, travelled to his little hideaway, patched Osha up, put a stew on, and Sol hasn't even left Kofar yet? Why did Sol bury the lead? Surely you gotta tell the Jedi that there's a Sith. Is it not possible to communicate verbally only and save some bandwidth? Like Trinity did in episode 1 when reporting the unauthorised force user. Once again, May has flip-flopped. She was going to knife Sol, but then decided against it and is now driving his ship. Does Pip know Tynan, Basil's language? Is it some form of harassment for Osha to wait for Kamir to strip off before revealing her presence? I imagine if the tables were turned, it wouldn't be so amusing. So Sol wants to tell the Jedi Council everything, but he hasn't told Osha yet. Get your priorities right, man. So it appears that the Republic is gaining new territories, and these new territories seem to be sceptical of the Jedi, so that's why the Jedi are keeping secrets from the Council. If the Council knew that the Jedi were keeping secrets from them, the Senate would have to agree with the new territories that want to disband the Jedi. Ironic. Osha asks if Kamir is a Jedi. He says that he was a long time ago. She says she's never heard of him. Well, there's 10,000 of them, lady, and you don't even know his name as far as I can tell. Osha now has to wait until tomorrow for the tide to go out so she can take Kamir's ship. Plenty of time to get to know each other. This is the most ridiculous scene in all of Star Wars. Basil confronts May and tries to impress her with his karate moves. Why isn't he getting help? She's killed two Jedi. May sets Pip back to factory settings and now he has Sith red glowing eyes. What are the odds that Osha has a backup of Pip's personality saved somewhere? Almost 100%. More wild schnoodlers! These things had better sell a lot of toys. Kamir has a new way of using the Force, tapping into fear and hate. Wait. How does Kamir know that Yord tried to arrest Osha for killing Dara? You stayed here to do something. She stayed because the tide's in and she can't come near your ship. Jeez, this Mog guy is an intimidating presence. Yeah, Sol. How could you not read Kamir's true intentions when you met him on Olega? He did say that the helmet helps him to keep you from reading his mind. So without the helmet, he should have been an open book. Meanwhile, there's someone else you should be reading like an open book right in front of you. You should probably give the Jedi gig up, Sol. It's just not working out. So now Sol's flip-flopping. He's preventing May from reporting him, even though he was going to report himself. It makes no sense. Did he read her thoughts? He's acting as if he doesn't even realise Basil is there. Wow, 
Lucky he jumped to light speed or that other ship would have slammed into them. Kamir wants the power of two, not the power of many. That looks like Kamir has been whipped. Who has a whip in this day and age? Wow, we, the very next scene, Venestra has a whip saber. Was Sol Kamir's dad and Venestra his master? Why assume Sol was the one who fell? Why not Kalnaka, who's been alone for years? Finally, someone restrains one of these twins. Oh, but you left her with the obviously evil Pip on her hip. What a whole heap of nothing. What did we learn from this episode? Kamir was a Jedi. Basil was a dumbass. Sol knows it's May on his ship. He doesn't seem upset that he left Osha behind on a strange planet. About the biggest thing we learnt was that Venestra was keeping things quiet from the Jedi in order to keep the new systems from forcing the Senate to ditch the Jedi. What a waste of 25 minutes. So I suppose we're two episodes from the end, it must be speculation time. Did Sol try to train Kamir outside the Jedi Order? That's why he asked him why a master would hide his face. Sol probably did the same to Kamir. I still don't know whether he could be his father. Sol always has those gloves on. I wonder if Venestra was whipping Kamir and Sol tried to step in and got whipped too. I still don't know what the terrible thing is that they did that made Torben Sudoku. I'm assuming next episode will be flashbacks. It can't be viewing the witch planet from a perspective other than May's, as we already saw scenes without May. We also need to see how May got to be trained by Kamir. May also needs to be redeemed as she just can't be a villain. There has to be a May vs Osha grudge match and a Sol vs Kamir rematch. Did Sol abandon Kamir on the witch planet? That's how he came to be with May? We also need to see what the deal was about killing a Jedi without a weapon. Maybe Kamir is Kiadi Mundi's Sith apprentice. That's why he was so eager to cover it up. If Kamir turns out to be Maul's or Palpatine's apprentice, that would be so lame. There's not really that many characters left to make interesting permutations. May, Osha, Sol, Kamir, Venestra. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, please consider subscribing. I release reviews occasionally when time allows, and a thumbs up would be a big motivator for further reviews. If you didn't like it, feel free to leave a thumbs down and let me know how I can improve in the comments below. Anyway, I'm Mixie. Thanks for your time, and have a good one.